Hey everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Scary Spikes, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. In today's video, we'll be talking about different things to do on the RSI website and how to do them. A lot of new players unfortunately don't know these things and it makes their experience more difficult. So we're going to go over a few things such as doing a character reset, copying your character to PTU, and much much more. Make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video to get the most out of it. There's also timestamps in the description for your convenience. Before we get started, a very quick and special thank you to Mumbles McShiftyFeet88. Yes, that's his real name. Still. Mumbles has been with our community for quite a while, and he's been one of our moderators as well. And throughout this entire time, he's also been a VIP Gold contributor. So Mumbles, thank you again for continuing to support what I do, and for being a VIP Gold contributor and a member of our community. If you enjoy this video and find it helpful, make sure to leave a like to let me know, subscribe if you're new, and ring that bell so that you never miss a video in the future as I publish videos weekly. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's start with the basics. Whether you're a new or advanced player, you'll want to take advantage of this next tool if you have tried everything else and nothing has worked for you when you're experiencing issues in Star Citizen. I'm talking, of course, about character resets. Now, you should know that character resets should only be used as a last ditch effort, a last resort to help you fix the problems that you're experiencing. The reason for this is because doing a character reset can have adverse effects on your account. It doesn't always, but it can. Remember, we're in alpha and things change very, very quickly. But let's go ahead and show you how to do it so that you can have the answer you need if everything else fails. First of all, of course, you want to be on the RSI website and then click on the account button on the top right hand corner of the screen. Then click on my hanger located here. Then click on settings located here. And finally, click on character reset located at the bottom of the menu on the left hand side. Scroll down and make sure to read through this text, especially if it's your first time doing a character reset. Again, this should only be done as a last resort, as it can have adverse effects on your account. So try to do some searching around, speak to people on Spectrum, Reddit, or just join our Discord. We have a lot of amazing people that are willing to help you out and help you address any issues you might have. Who knows, it might be a common issue that other people have uh, experienced in the past and are willing to help you with a quick and easy fix. That being said though, if those things do not work for you and you still want to do a character reset, simply click on this button down here. Let CIG know why you're doing the reset. Now this could be important because if a lot of people are reporting the same issue why they're doing a reset, the CIG might be pressured to fix a certain issue so as to avoid so many resets being done or to avoid inconveniencing so many players who are forced to do a reset because they don't have any other options. So filling this out is actually quite important. Make sure to also fill in the issue council report if you uh, if you have one or if you see one in the issue council. Now you can go to issue council simply by scrolling up and going to the apps button here at the top of the RSI website and click on issue council. If you don't know what issue council is, it's basically a way for people to report and contribute to and validate issues that are happening to other players. And so that's a great way to either report something that you're experiencing or to contribute to an issue that's already been ongoing to let CIG know that there's a greater number of people experiencing it in an effort to try to get them to fix it as soon as possible. Let's go ahead and go back to the character reset tool though. Like I said, make sure to put in a reason. You can go ahead and put an address to the issue council report if that exists, and then you'll need to enter your password. At that point, all you need to do is click on the submit button and wait 15 minutes. This is really important. You won't be able to log into your account for 15 minutes. That's one five, 15 minutes after you use this tool. And that's because basically what's happening is they're erasing everything from your account and putting everything back from the long-term persistence ledger into your account once everything has been reset. This is an effort to basically make sure that you have all of your ships that you purchased in game. You will never lose access to your pledged ships, so you never have to worry about that. And also to make sure that you have the same amount of alpha UEC that you started with before you did your character reset. Now, this doesn't always work, and this is again why I implore you to try other things before you do a character reset. Because copying from the long-term persistence ledger into your account sometimes doesn't work properly or not everything is copied. That might result in you losing progress, items, weapons, armor, and even ships. 
uh, that might also include UEC that you've earned in the game, and losing any of those things is not fun. So make sure to only use this as a last ditch resort, but now you know how to do it, and hopefully this helps you resolve any issues you may have. Let's go on to the next tip. If you want to experience the bleeding edge of what Star Citizen has to offer, then this next tip might be for you. We're of course talking about the PTU, or otherwise known as the Public Test Universe. It's a place to test different patches before they come out, and it comes out in various waves before major patches are released to the public. First of all, the Evocati, the hand-selected group of insider testers with CIG, test a number of different things to make sure that the patch is actually ready for testing in the PTU before the PTU is actually opened up, and more and more people through numerous phases are allowed to come in and start testing. Phase 1 is usually people who are concierge or subscribers, Phase 2 is usually people that are extremely active in the game and on Spectrum, and Phase 3 is usually available to everybody, the entire public. There's a few steps that you need to follow here, but it's really easy to set up and it'll let you test stuff before it actually comes out, which means you won't have to wait as long as everybody else who doesn't use the PTU to experience some of the new Bleeding Edge features and tech that's implemented in new patches before they're even released to the public. So let's find out how to do it. First and foremost, of course, you have to be on the RSI website. That is a given. Go ahead and click on the account button here and again, click on my hanger. And then we're going to go ahead and click on settings here in the top left hand corner. Click on Public Test Universe, displayed in yellow. And then what you're going to see is the patch. So currently, uh, the PTU is in 3.14.0. So this is the one we're testing, and I believe we are in Phase 3 as of the filming of this video. But uh, very, very simple to get your account copied over. All you need to do is click on this button here, give it a few minutes, and then your account should be copied over. We'll need to go now and download the PTU in the launcher. So let's go ahead and jump into the launcher, and I'll show you how to do that. Finally, to be able to access the PTU, you'll need to open your launcher and make sure that you're logged in. And then from this drop down menu here, you'll need to switch from live to PTU and click on the install button. Go ahead and agree. And once the PTU is installed and updated, you'll be good to go. So one thing that all Star Citizen players have in common is the fact that they've had to pledge a ship at some point in order to be able to access the game. And also that that ship had to be a part of a game package for them to be able to get that access. I'm going to show you now how to get a game package, how to get a standalone ship if you already have a game package, and how to upgrade your ship if you don't want to get a standalone ship and already have the game package for your account. The very first thing you're going to need is of course an account. If you have nothing here, you'll want to click on the account and go ahead and enlist. What you can do as well is you can go to the description of this video where I'll have a link that takes you directly to a sign up page with my referral link already pre applied. And I'd be very grateful if you use that link as it will give you an extra 5000 alpha UBC to start out with in the game. And it will help me get one step closer to a javelin. And yes, you can write it whenever you want. Now, when you have your account, there's a, a few easy steps to follow to go ahead and get your game package. The, the website will show you right away two different types of ships that you can buy, the Aurora and the Mustang. And we'll see that if we click on the pledge store here at the top of the screen. So there they are. These are the two most common ships for $45 uh, a piece. And you can either get the Aurora or the Mustang. Important to note that you do not need two game packages to run the game. You only need one. And beyond that, if you want any other ships, you can either upgrade the ship that you have, or you can buy a standalone ship to your like. But you only need one game package. The great thing is though that you don't just have a choice between these two. In the nav menu here, we have a few choices and the first one is game packages. And if you click in here, you'll see that we have a number of different game packages to choose from. We have the base ones as we've seen. We also have the base plus Squadron 42 with Squadron 42 being offered at a discount if you buy it with either of the two game packages. And then of course we have a number of different game packages available as well, such as the Avenger Titan, the Cutlass Black, the Misc Freelancer, and the RSI Andromeda. Now, I've done videos on all of these, and they're all fantastic ships. I would recommend them all to you. Of course, you would need to choose one that applies to your playstyle. And if you want to learn more, go ahead and check out the Star Citizen playlist in the description below and in the card in the top right hand corner of the screen. If you're wondering what these are and wondering why the prices are so crazy, 
don't worry about these. These are special, special packages available to only concierge members. And concierge members are people who have spent $1,000 or more in Star Citizen. How do you know you're a concierge member? That's a great question. Well, for one, your wallet will be crying. Two, your wife will be yelling at you. And three, you'll have this nifty little concierge button in your My Account. If you don't have that, you're not going to see these packs available here and you will only be able to see the ones without these little icons, which honestly is more than good enough for getting started in the game. Once you've got your game package and maybe you want to upgrade to another ship, let me show you how that's done. Very, very easy. You all you need to do is go ahead and click on the ship upgrades here and it'll take you to the upgrade screen. So just know that if you upgrade your ship, basically you're going to consume the initial ship. You're going to pay the difference between the value of the ship that you're upgrading from to the value of the ship that you're upgrading to. You can do that with store credit or new money, but we'll cover that in a minute. And then you'll just need to apply the upgrade in order to basically make it work. So let's go ahead and upgrade one of our ships. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the Pisces Expedition here. And let's see what we want. Uh, why don't we actually upgrade it to the Avenger Titan? All right. So now we have a few options and note that on the right hand side, you're only going to get options for ships that are more valuable than the ship that you're upgrading from, because it's not possible to downgrade to a ship that's cheaper than the ship that you initially start out with and get the rest in store credits back. That's not necessarily how it works. You can only upgrade and not downgrade. So be very careful when you're upgrading. You can melt your ship, but again, more on that in a little bit later. Anyway, if you want to upgrade your ship, you just need to pick the ship that you're upgrading from to the ship that you're upgrading to. The value of the ship that you're upgrading from will be on the bottom right hand corner of the left side here. And the value of the ship that you're upgrading to will be on the bottom right hand corner of the right side. Then down here, you'll be able to see how much money you'll need to pay, which will be the difference between the value of the first ship and the second ship. And at that point, all you need to do is go ahead and click add to cart. You'll get some suggestions here for paints. You can go ahead and ignore those as many of those paints are available in the game. And then you can simply continue once you've added any coupons or store credits that you might have. Once you click on continue, you're going to be asked to verify your address as well as your payment method. And then once you are finished your transaction, you can go into your my hanger. And just like you see that I have a uh, an item here, you're going to have an item similar to this, of course, with a different picture and a different name, it's going to say upgrade up here. And you're going to want to click on this little triangle here to expand the box. It's going to ask you uh, to apply the update or exchange it. So you're going to have two buttons here. You're going to have the red exchange button. This is going to allow you to melt or exchange the upgrade. So basically, if you change your mind, then you want to get the value of what you paid back in store credit. Instead of actually applying the upgrade, you can do that or you can apply the upgrade. Once you click on apply upgrade, it's going to ask you to click on the ship that you want to uh, upgrade to, which will be in another box that's not shown here. And then you'll need to put in your password and click on the accept button. And then the upgrade will be applied. At that point, all you need to do is press F5 to refresh your My Hangar page, and you're going to see uh, your upgrade in the, whatever ship that you upgraded. So we were to scroll down here because we were upgrading our Pisces, the upgrade would then be displayed in the Pisces. Note that the Pisces will still be displayed as the original ship because that's the ship that we upgraded from, but the ships that we upgraded to would be located here. And in order to get into this again, you just need to click on this little arrow button down here, and it's going to expand this and show you exactly what's included, as well as what type of insurance and other items you have included down here. So I hope that's helpful. And if you're looking to just buy a standalone ship, there are two different ways to do that as well. So let's say you don't want a game package because you've already got one and you don't want to upgrade any of your ships. You just want a new ship and you don't mind paying either with store credit or out of pocket or both to get that new ship. There's a couple of different ways to do it. And the first is to go back into the pledge store and go ahead and hover over the ships button here. You can see that we have a number of different manufacturers available here. So if you'd like to shop by manufacturer, like for example, Crusader, you can go ahead and click on that and it'll bring you here and show you all of the ships by Crusader. Then you can further adjust your search and your filters by these filters on the left hand side. If you want to just go ahead and browse through the entire roster of ships, you can just go ahead and click on ships. And then as you can see here, we have a number of different ships available, but just know that these are not all the ships that you can buy at the moment. These are just all the ships that are currently in game files or that are currently in production or concept or some form of development. 
Okay, so in order to find out whether they're actually available, you'll click on any of the ships that you're interested in. If you have buying options for the ship, you'll have this button here, which will show you the buying options for it. All right. And then if we scroll back up, we can see that it says flight ready. All right. So this could be one of three things. It could be either flight ready. It could be hangar ready, which means that uh, basically it's available to be viewed in a hangar, but it's usually not done with the interior, so you can't fly it yet. There is also in production and then there's also another one, actually. So there's four of them in concept. But the ones that are in concept are still being uh, sort of drawn up and, you know, a lot of the um, basic work is being done to basically uh, conceptualize the ship. In production means that they're currently producing the ship. Hangar ready again just means that you can view it in the hangar and flight ready means that it is flyable in the game. Note that flight ready doesn't necessarily mean that you can buy it in the game or that you can buy it on the website. It just means that if you own that ship, it is flyable. There's a much easier way, though, of buying ships. If you don't know what you're looking for, I guess this is OK because you can learn about all the different ships, what they have, and you can even compare similar models to other models in the same line, like, for example, Constellation Taurus with the Constellation Andromeda, Aquila, Phoenix and so on. But there is a much faster way and i feel like all of you who are a little bit more advanced will really appreciate this because if you're looking to buy a ship that's very hard to get such as the ones that have quantity limited sales like my idris that i picked up at the iee or rather sorry the invictus week this year this is going to be how to do it and it's really really simple and very very effective because it saves you lots of time what you want to do in this case is you want to hover over the extras and go to standalone ship now, this is going to, unlike the ships menu, give you a list of ships, but only ships that are available for purchase in the game. And you don't have to go and looking for buying options because you can just add it to your cart immediately from this list. You can further apply filters here. And you can also search for specific ships that you're looking for here. So in this case, I can see that we have a Freelancer, a Freelancer Max and a Freelancer Dur available for purchase. We can see their prices. We can get more information on each and every one of them if we would like to. And then we can, of course, add them to our cart immediately. This is actually how I purchased my Idris within the first 10 seconds of Fleet Week coming out with their sale on the Idris. I was basically just refreshing this page with Idris in the search box. And of course, we're not going to have anything here because the Idris is not on sale at the moment. And spamming F5 or Control F5 until it was there. Add to cart and within 10 seconds, I had purchased it faster than anybody who could have possibly gone through here and said, okay, let me see, let me find the manufacturer. Let me see what the buying options are. At that point, all of the addresses were already sold out. So if you're looking for a very fast way to buy a ship and you know exactly what you're looking for, go to extras, go to standalone ship and type in what you're looking for and use the filters here to narrow down your search. All right, so that is going to be how to uh, buy a game package, how to pledge a standalone ship and how to upgrade your ships. I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to the next tip. Whether you're someone who's brand new to the game and just wants one of your friends to join you or someone that's been around for a very long time and inviting an old friend to come back and rediscover the game with you, you've probably thought about gifting a ship or a game package to one of your friends once or twice. And that's totally doable in Star Citizen. However, there are some caveats and some requirements that you need to meet, especially as a new citizen. And I'm going to go over those with you now. So first and foremost, you will, of course, need your own account and your own game package. You need to have the title of backer in order to do it. And to get that backer title, you need to basically have your game package purchased by yourself, not gifted to you by somebody else because that won't work for at least 30 days. You can check that by going to my account, my hangar, settings, profile, scroll down, and under your title here, you should be able to find backer. Now, it's very likely that mine's been replaced by a higher role uh, and you can't see it there. But in order to get the backer role, you basically need to have purchased your uh, game package and had that on your account for 30 days. This is in a way to help prevent abuse. Uh, but in any case, that is the requirement in order to be able to gift it. Let's now go to the My Hangar page here and I'll show you how to actually gift something to a friend of yours once you've met that criteria. Go ahead and click on My Hangar. And there's uh, again a couple of caveats here and I'm going to go over that with you now. 
we're going to use a few examples we're going to use this one here with the merchant man and we're going to go ahead and use this one here with the pisces so uh the first and most important thing to remember is that if you want to gift something to anyone it has to have originally been purchased with new money you cannot buy a package or a standalone ship with store credit and gift it to someone the original ship even if it's been upgraded with store credit has to have been purchased with new money which means if you buy a ship like the pisces here with brand new money and you don't upgrade it you can gift it because it, it was bought with new money if you buy yourself a standalone ship like the Kruger P-72 Archimedes here and you upgrade it to a ship like the Banner Defender like I've done, as long as you've paid new money for the original ship, which is the Archimedes, even though you use store credit to upgrade to the Merchantman, you can still gift this Merchantman to a friend because the original ship was purchased with new money. Now, let's look at a ship that I purchased just with store credit, which is this Redeemer here. As you can see, I have the option to exchange this to get store credit back for the value of the ship and the money that I've spent for it. But unfortunately, even though it's a standalone ship, because I used only store credit to purchase it, I don't have the option to gift it. The same applies if you're using store credit in conjunction with new money. The original ship has to have been paid for with 100% new money. No store credit whatsoever in order for the original ship to be gifted or the original ship after having been upgraded even with store credits being giftable. Okay, so that's basically uh, what the caveat is there. Now, in order to gift a ship, it's actually really, really easy and you can gift different things like armor and weapons and whatever else you happen to have in the same fashion. All you need to do is click on that gift button there. It's going to tell you some information here. You're going to need to put in the password for your account. The name of the person that you are gifting to, usually here I just copy and paste their email address, it doesn't really matter, and then of course their email address. Keep in mind that this should be the email address that they have on their RSI account, and not because you're really going to run into issues if you send it to a different email address, it's just that you're going to want to make sure that that person is constantly logged into the email in which they've used for their RSI account, otherwise you're going to run into issues. So make sure to get the person's email that they use for their RSI account and inform them that they need to be logged in to that account on their RSI website before clicking the gift link in the email. Otherwise, it will not work. At that point, all you need to do is go ahead and click on gift and you're going to see something like this. So in this case, I've gifted this as a giveaway to someone and you can see that it's been gifted, but it hasn't been accepted yet. Thus, it's still in my hangar. Once this is accepted, this is going to go away. And that's how you know that it's been accepted by the person that you've gifted to. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments about gifting, make sure to leave those in the comments section below. And of course, make sure to join our discord for help if you need it. My last tip here is going to be to help you understand how to exchange pledges and of course also how to reclaim them. Now, again, there's a few caveats and requirements here, none of which are really taught to you when you create your account nor when you play the game. And these are all things that you might be expected to do uh, for yourself at some point in the future during your Star Citizen career. So it's good stuff to know. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, I'll show you how you can go ahead and exchange your pledge, which is actually quite easy to do. We'll go ahead and uh, just hit the menu and go to the uh, account in my hangar there. And then once we're in my account, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down. And I've got a few options here for you just to show you guys the difference between the two and uh, basically teach you what you need to do. So first and foremost, what you would need to do is basically hit one of these arrows here. I'm actually not gonna be doing it with these. Go ahead and go with the standalone ship, the uh, Aegis Redeemer here, ILW edition. All right, so I've purchased this during the uh, Invictus Fleet Week. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm not happy with it. What can I do? Well, the great thing is that to reduce basically having to communicate with people about refunds and all this stuff, what CIG has done is they've allowed you to exchange your pledge, the money that you've already paid to support the game and exchange the reward that you get without having to really communicate with them very much or at all in this case. Uh, so this is really good for both because it reduces the amount of communication CIG receives with respect to refunds when people are not happy with a particular ship and it gives people the choice to choose what they really want, which is really awesome. So how do you do this? Well, you'll wanna go ahead and click on the little arrow here to expand this list. And then you just go ahead and click on exchange. You're gonna get some information here. So you have the exchange pledge there. You can see that uh, you'll get the uh, standalone ship here 
the uh, Redeemer is being exchanged, and then down here it'll tell you the value of the ship. Go ahead and just make sure you read this and understand what it is that you're doing, because once you do this, you will destroy that pledge and you will get the value of that pledge in store credit in your account to be used for other things. If you're absolutely sure you want to do this, you can go ahead and type in your password here and go ahead and press submit. Very important thing to note is that when you purchase a ship, you need to wait 24 hours before this option becomes available to you. So you have to be very careful when you're buying a ship. Don't just arbitrarily buy a ship and think, oh yeah, well, I can just reclaim it later or exchange it later, excuse me, and then use that money to buy another ship and just keep trying ships throughout the day and see what I like. You can't do that, but you're restricted with uh, with doing this once after the 24 hour period has passed if you're buying a new ship. So again, just be careful. Make sure that you're buying ships that you think you'll enjoy and not just ships that you just kind of want to try out for the sake of it because you will have to wait that 24 hours to get the option to exchange it to get your store credit back so you can purchase something else all right so that's how you do it very very easy and once you do it this whole thing will disappear so again just make sure that that's something that you want to do because it's not something that you can undo and uh, especially with ships like this and this is the uh, Redeemer. This is only available during the Invictus Fleet Week in IAE. And so you really don't want to make the mistake of getting rid of this. There is a way to get it back. But again, there's caveats there. And I'll go over that in the next steps. Anyway, once you've exchanged it, you can click on the account there. And you'll see the store credit applied to your account. At which point you can go back to the pledge store and get yourself something else. Or you can even use that store credit to uh, apply an upgrade to a ship that you've bought for new money if you want to gift a ship to somebody. So that's always an option as well, okay? So what happens if you've made a horrible, horrible mistake? You've just literally gotten rid of the ship that you really wanted to. You picked the wrong one. Your cat was sleeping on your keyboard while you were doing this. I don't know why that would be a thing, but hey, accidents happen to the best of us. How do you get it back? Well, thankfully CIG have thought of that as well. And it's in this option here where you have buy back pledges. Okay, so the most recent ship that I've bought, for example, was this one here, the Rylan. Okay, and maybe it was a mistake to exchange it for store credit. Maybe I want this back. Now, of course, I don't have any store credit left because I've already used it for other ships, but I still can purchase this with new money if I want and buy it back, even though it might not necessarily be available on the pledge store. This is actually also a great way to make ships that are not always available to you, but not necessarily ships that you want in your account per se, uh, to basically hold on to them until they are available to fly and then repurchase them at a time that's convenient for you. The Rylan, unfortunately, is not available at this time and neither is the G12 or uh, the, uh, the Hercules Starlifter uh, Cerberus paint, right? But you're able to basically melt these or exchange them for store credit, use the store credit for something else, and they'll stay here forever and allow you to repurchase them whenever you want. So aside from just rescuing yourself from making a really bad decision, this is also a great way of basically temporarily storing ships in your account, of course, without having access to them in the game, uh, while basically giving yourself an out and, and an option to purchase the ship if and when you want to. Now, there is a bit of a downside with this, and uh, this is going to be with regards to the tokens. So let's just assume that I had about, you know, a few hundred dollars in store credit and I was able to buy my ship back. So if you have a token, which you know when you have this orange box here inside of the buyback pledges uh, area here, OK, it tells you that you have one opportunity to buy back a pledge with store credit. This is because my account currently has what's called a buyback token on it. The way that you get buyback tokens is that every four months, a buyback token is automatically added to your account, but only if you don't already have one. If you already have a buyback token, a buyback token will not be stacked on your account, which means you can only have one at any given time. What the buyback token allows you to do is it allows you to purchase or reclaim ships and other things that you have melted or exchanged for uh, store credit in the past. And it allows you to do that with store credit, okay? So that you don't have to use new money to do it. The caveat there is that once you've done it, okay? So let's go ahead and just say we want to buy this back. We see that it's going to cost $200. We're going to add it to our cart, okay? So now we have this in our cart. It's as if we had purchased it from the pledge store, but it's not available in the pledge store. It's just giving us the opportunity to buy back a pledge that we've previously made and exchanged. So here's where it gets a little tricky. 
if you use even one dollar of store credit your token will be used up and you're going to have to wait until the next quarter to receive a token again in order to be allowed to even use store credits in your purchase so using the token is only ever recommended where you're using a, a full amount of your store credit or as much of your store credit as possible to, to basically cover the full purchase price of your reclaimed pledge and not really to just use a little bit of it because you're basically wasting it at that point. Without the token present, you will need to spend new money. You don't have a choice. So you're always given the opportunity to buy back your pledge whenever you like if you've made a mistake or maybe you're just exchanging it on purpose because you want to store a ship in your account that you can repurchase any time with new money if that's not a problem for you even though uh you know you don't need it now but maybe in the future it's not going to be on sale and you want the opportunity to purchase it whenever you want that's a very valid way to use this system as well and it's a way that a lot of people do use it but no matter what your method or what your reason for using it is you have to remember that you will only ever be allowed to repurchase or reclaim your pledges with new money with the exception of if you have a token available. And if you use that token, even with $1 of store credit, the token will be used up and you'll need to wait until the next quarter to get an opportunity to reclaim a pledge with store credit again. Until then, you can only do so with new money. So just be very careful with that. But you do have the option to do this and go back and buy different things back. Like you see, I've bought uh, some Nova paint and a couple of different ships. So if I wanted to get some of these back, I could just buy them. I could buy them with store credit, which of course I don't have if I did have store credit, uh, but I do have that option because I have a token. Otherwise, I'd have to use new money. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you guys. I know it was a little bit long to explain, but again, this is not something that's really very, very well explained or at least in any sort of detail when you create your account or when you play the game. If you have any questions, please make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you continue to struggle with any of the issues that I've mentioned in this video, make sure that you reach out to me uh, here on YouTube, or of course, you can also join our Discord community. Links for that will be down in the description below of course we also stream wednesdays and fridays on twitch if you'd like to come and join us live we do also stream star citizen of course we can help you out live there as well if you would like to get some help there uh we're available wednesdays and fridays at 8 p.m eastern on twitch and guys that's going to do it for me in this video i really hope that you enjoyed it and found some use i do apologize it was a little bit longer than usual a lot of talking head stuff here but you know stuff that i don't really find mentioned in a lot of tutorials so i hope that you found it helpful if you did you can help me out by hitting that like button to let me and youtube know that you enjoyed the video and found it helpful subscribe if you're brand new and ring that bell so that you never miss a video in the future as i publish videos weekly that being said, guys, thank you so very much for watching this video. I really appreciate all of you stopping by. Hope it was useful, and I hope to see you in the next video.